Thank you so much for joining us. Today is another step in the journey of honoring one of our states, our country's finest, the life of General Maurice Rose, truly one for the ages. It's, a, it's really important to raise awareness within Colorado and across the country to visitors here at our state capitol about the great legacy, dedication, and service of General Maurice Rose. I want to thank the folks here today who worked tirelessly to make this day happen. We're joined by Marshall Fogel, General Rose's biographer. Where'd Marshall go? We're joined by Paul Shaman, who along with Fogel brought this idea to the state legislature. Thank you, Paul. Uh, one of uh, Colorado's um, best, most talented artists and sculptors, George Levine from Loveland is here. He's putting his talents towards the statue and we have a, uh, a small replica of what will be an 18 foot, uh, including the uh, base uh, structure. And of course, we're joined by uh, several legislators, uh, Representative Woodrow, of course the speaker will be um, coming up in just a moment and he really is largely responsible for, for us achieving this day and getting this done. You know, we know that our country has a complicated past <clears throat> regarding the, the statues we build and what, the, what, the, what they represent. This is a great honor to celebrate someone who earned their reputation in service to our country, uh, making great sacrifices. General Rose's father was a Polish rabbi. He arrived in the United States with his family in the late 1800s. Maurice was only three years old when he got here, and the family landed in Denver. Fourteen years later, 17, Rose enlisted in the United States Army, where he went on to serve in two world wars, World War I and World War II. He became the highest ranking and most distinguished Jewish American soldier in U.S. history along the way. President Dwight Eisenhower wrote in a telegram to General Rose's wife that Rose was, quote, a leader who inspired his men to speedy ac accomplishment of tasks that to a lesser man would have appeared almost impossible. Uh, sadly, in the final months of the war, General Rose lost his life in the line of duty. And here at home, in Colorado and across the nation, a grateful nation mourned and celebrated his contributions to protect our freedom. General Rose never made it home. He was buried at the Netherlands American Cemetery and Memorial in Margraten. So it seems only fitting that we begin the quest to really give him a final resting place and celebration in his hometown uh, that gave comfort to his parents and his family. We're proud to honor the mem memory of this towering figure in Colorado's proud history of military service by formally commemorating his life, his achievements, and his sacrifice through a monument which stands tall in Veterans Memorial Park. Colorado's home to over 400,000 men and women who've proudly wore in the uniform of the United States of America and the different branches of service, tens of thousands of active duty military. And that's really what Veterans Memorial Park is all about, celebrating the contributions uh, that people have made uh, here in Colorado and across the country to protecting our freedoms. Good morning, Governor, Mr. Speaker. Larry Mizell, my dear friend. It's an honor to be the author of a two-volume work on um, the life and legend and times of General Maurice Rose. For those of you who aren't familiar with Rose, let me explain he is the most decorated battle tank commander in United States military history. He is the first to negotiate a surrender of a German army when the Allied forces uh, landed in Africa. He liberated Palermo. He earned three silver stars within a year and a half after he moved over to Africa to uh, fight Rommel. He also was the first to cross into Germany in World War II. How biblical is it for a Jewish war hero to be the first to invade Nazi Germany, uh, capture the first major city in Germany, shoot down the first German airplane in Germany, first to cross the Blitzkrieg line, are just a few of the examples of what a courageous soldier he was because he led from the front. Governor, uh, I'd like to present you with volume one and volume two 
uh, of the life of General Rose on behalf of the 3rd Armored Division veterans, on behalf of the veterans who have served and are now serving in uh, our great country. And I'd like to present to you these books on behalf of the people of the state of Colorado as well. Thank you.
perfect weather. On behalf of the elderly, we are here celebrating the memorial statue of General Rose by uh, half brother, Larry Meisel. This is I'm my Kara, daughter. His daughter. Oh, Kara. I've met you before, I think. Oh, I'm done. Yes. It's really nice to see you too. Great to see you. Thanks for being here. Nice. Thanks for being Big day. 50 years I thought about this. I've got my own. You were young, young. All the stuff you when we met the governor the first time. You bet. Great to see you and thank you so much for all your help. It's a pleasure, my honor, for sure. Remember Paul? And this is his wife, Lisa. And uh, this is my yeah. wife, Lisa. Well, uh, pleasure to meet you. Yeah. You can get it. You know why she's So tell me your names once again, please. Jonna? Yes. Daniel. 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 Charlie. Charlie. So is anyone named after me? Yeah. So yeah. No, he's, I mean, they knew him. Perhaps he knew that he wouldn't be around to continue that. That's something very special. Yeah. Do you I mean, just the things that were said. Sheriff's Department, under Sheriff Harvey Copeland, he was chief. Yeah, chief investigator for the Sheriff's Department. And then when the re-election came, Dad went to. He was chief of police. For the San Antonio Airport. For well, that's, until, that's, until that's where people started last week. Quite a career. See, when his name was on the airport, you would see all the names that are directly on the airport. Your, your husband's name is on His name was on there, and that's when the veterans started going through. Oh, she had That's how they started recognizing, finding him. They said, well, I wonder if he's any relation to the general. <laughs> well, good afternoon. My name is Patrick Ustruck, and I'm the Command Sergeant Major in the Colorado National Guard. Uh, it's my honor to welcome all of you to Major General Maurice Rose Monument and celebration today. We are here to honor General Rose's life and service. From his childhood as son of a rabbi growing up in Denver, Colorado, through his experiences in World War I and in the U.S. Cavalry to his meteoric rise in World War II as one of the greatest battlefield commanders ever produced by our country. General Rose was commander of the 1st Army's legendary 3rd Armored Division, where he famously named Spearhead and the highest ranking officer killed in battle in the European theater of World War II. Before we begin, we want to extend our sincere gratitude to History Colorado for hosting this special dedication. He grew the American warrior, how very appropriate that he was born during Hanukkah, the Jewish festival of lights, where we commemorate the miracle of lights and the great valor of Jewish warriors, the Maccabees, who fought against tremendous odds and prevailed, forever enshrining the Jewish principle that a little light will always dispel darkness and goodness will always triumph over evil. That little Jewish boy, son of a rabbi, grandson of a rabbi, and from a long lineage of Jewish leaders, from a young age longed to be a soldier. And perhaps stories of his faith resonated with him as he fought in several wars, culminating in the ultimate showdown between good and evil, tyranny and freedom in World War II. My family and I are honored to be here with all of you today. It means so much to have Governor Jared Polis and the state of Colorado dedicate this monument in honor of my grandfather. On behalf of the entire Rose family, we'd like to extend our gratitude to everyone involved in creating this lasting moment. 
Marty. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you especially to Paul Shaman, author Marshall Vogel, architect Seth Rosenen, for your efforts, and George Lundin. You truly captured my grandfather's likeness. We're also so grateful to many donors who incredible generosity, generosity made this all possible. This has been a difficult, bittersweet week for us. It's been three years since the loss of my father, Maurice, Reese Roderick Rose, who was the general's youngest son. I know that my dad would be so proud of today's dedication ceremony, and I know that my grandfather would have been so proud of the man that he grew up to be and the family that he raised. It's been a long journey, seven years, but we're all here together to honor the most decorated battle tank commander in U.S. military history. Governor Polis, on behalf of the Polo family, on behalf of all the service people throughout the centuries, I want to present you with the statute for your office for the state of Colorado. And the reason it looks like that is it shows General Rose leading from the front. I want to say because I've gotten to know you, how proud I am to know you, and all the work that you did to make this happen. I love you, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> years. Every year he sings happy birthday to me over the phone and I sing happy birthday to him. The good news is he sings happy birthday. The bad news is he's no Frank Sinatra. <laughs> Larry, I love you. That statute's for you and to honor you for all the work you not only did to help us get this monument built, but also your devotion to the people to serve our country. Thank you very much. On behalf of Paul Shaman and myself, we're honored to present you with a transfer of title to the state of Colorado from Paul Shaman to Marshall Paul. Thank you very much. including the book that I wrote. And in the back of the book, I'm going to quote part of what I said about war. In the 20th century and the beginning of the first 15 years of this century, our nation has been constantly at war or engaged in armed conflicts. The world community hopes for a lasting peace. Yet wars and armed conflicts continue with more powerful and devastating weaponry. In all this confusion, where war is the result, our country will always honor our military heroes like Major General Maurice Rose. The story of Rose is in tribute and gratitude to all of those known or unknown who protect or protected America's freedom guaranteed by our United States Constitution. And the most heartbreaking and heartwarming letter written by Chaplain Maurer in November of 1944, which is also in the book written by me, two special paragraphs that I think will maybe bring a tear in your eye. But remember these words when you go to see the statue of General Rose today. And I quote, through all we hear the overtones of grim loneliness, heartbreaking agony, bleeding experience, indomitable courage, and unrelenting, uncompromising, unswerving devotion to the spirited division of the Third Armored Division, and the fortitude of trusting faith in our officers, 
General Rose, conducting this mighty symphony, a baton, not red with blood, but a baton crowned with an eagle and pointing to the stars. And after this tumultuous surge of war's music, the closing bars would bring the soft, clear, ringing chime of a church bell, calling the third to worship in the holy hush of a sanctuary, far removed from the sounds of warfare, the comfort and peace of hearth and home, a maiden's prayer, a father's hand clasp, the devotion of a loyal wife, a mother's tender lullaby, and a babe wrapped in sleep. Home is the taker from the wars. One soldier said, I know about that letter, but it'll make me cry, so don't read it. I want to close by God blessing all of you. God bless our service men and women. God bless America. Thank you. In the words of the late, great Jerry Garcia, what a long, strange trip it's been. As a young child, I was fascinated by the bullet-riddled helmet I saw at Rose Hospital. Then in February of 2019, I attended a lecture by Rose biographer Marshall Fogel, and I was hooked. I promised myself I would do anything possible to assist in guaranteeing that the memory and legacy of Maurice Rose would not be forgotten in his home state of Colorado. The idea of a monument was born. There are fewer and fewer members of the greatest generation left to remind us of this pivotal time in history. We're very honored to have some of them here today. So as statues were being torn down and debated throughout our country, I set out to have one erected on our state capitol grounds. With the support of Marshall Fogel, Larry Mizell, George Lundin, Seth Roseman, Alec Garnett, and the Rose family, we made this dream a reality. Very few Americans today have a family member or even an acquaintance serving in the military. My hope is that when the community visits this monument, they not only learn about our heroic and most honorable General Rose, but remember the 1% of the nation that continues to serve in the military, and even more importantly, their families that continue to sacrifice on behalf of all the rest of us. In today's climate of ever-increasing anti-Semitism, it is more critical than ever to set the record straight about Jews' loyalty to the countries in which they live. As far back as the Revolutionary War, there have been questions about Jews' patriotism to the United States. Yet these questions have been thoroughly debunked by historians. This monument will visibly add to the historical record of a Jewish of Jewish patriotism by initiating the accurate documentation of a Colorado Jewish war hero's life, military accomplishments, and sacrifice. Again, thank you to all of those who contributed time and funding to make this magnificent monument a reality. It's truly due to your efforts that this long, strange trip will have such a happy and positive ending. Thank you.
my awesome honor to introduce on this great Colorado day our governor, General Polis. Excuse me, Governor Polis. <laughs> Is that a field promotion? Uh, thank you. Um, good afternoon. What a beautiful day here in downtown Denver. Uh, it is such an honor on behalf of the state of Colorado to honor, remember, celebrate the life of Colorado's own Major General Maurice Rose. General Rose died a hero, and now more Coloradans will remember his name. Among so many other accomplishments, General Rose was the highest ranking U.S. serviceman killed by enemy fire in the European theater during World War II. He was the most decorated armored battlefield commander in U.S. history. Throughout his lifetime of service, General Rose was awarded the Distinguished Service Cross, Distinguished Service Medal, Purple Heart with an Oak Leaf Cluster, and six other awards. He completed an impressive number of firsts during his military career, including negotiation of the first major surrender of Axis forces, the first to capture a major German city. He was the first officer of any army to lead a ground invasion of Germany since Napoleon. This monument will also celebrate another first that he had the honor to fulfill. It's the first uh, in Colorado to honor a Jewish Colorado. Uh, as you can see, uh, George designed the bronze statue that depicts the general gallantly motioning to his troops and his poise leading under pressure, uh, really hoping to capture the spirit as well as the likeness of General Rose. We also wouldn't be here today. Okay. There are some Gold Star families with us here today. There are members of the Rose family, as well as others. And just know, our hearts are with you. Your loved ones will never be forgotten. Uh, those who are not Gold Star can families can't even uh, imagine the sacrifices that your families have made for our freedom, for our nation. Know that we stand with you, and we will always honor and remember the legacy of those who paid the ultimate high price to protect our freedom. Could our Gold Star families, including the Rose family, please rise. And to our veterans, our men and women in uniform, uh, on behalf of a grateful state of Colorado, you've earned our respect and gratitude. If our veterans and service members, uh, current service members could rise, we would like to show you our appreciation. Fly over. We are privileged to dedicate the Major General Maurice Rose Monument on State Capitol grounds that will be here for generations to come, forever commemorating Rose's sacrifice and dedication as a soldier. This monument honors a true Colorado hero a true American hero, representing the very image of a leader risking his life for his troops, for his nation. There is a closeness we can feel at this sacred place. We're surrounded by the presence of those who have served our country, those who have sacrificed so much for the freedom we enjoy here on this day. Uh, as a Coloradan and as an American, I want to express our gratitude to Major General Maurice Rose for his service and for his sacrifice. Thank you, Major General Maurice Rose. Thank you, Governor. For those that are able, please rise. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to have a firing salute, so just be prepared, it's rather loud.
I would now like to invite Larry Mizell, Linda Ekbon Lent, Chad Christensen, Adam Argon, Marshall Fogel, Paul Shimon, Seth Rosenbaum, George Mundine, and the Rose family to come forward for the ribbon cutting ceremony. Uh, for this benediction, I'd like to offer the words of uh, Rabbi Sam Rose. It's words that he shared when he heard the news that his um, son had passed away. It is well that since this had to be, it happened in the week of Passover. As God said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. He spoke not only to the Jews, but to the Gentiles, the Americans, the Germans, to all peoples. When I see the sacrifice of the blood, I will pass over you. And so may God accept this sacrifice and see the blood and pass over all people for their sins at this Passover time for my son's sake. The Jewish people have demonstrated their love of liberty and freedom for all people since the days of Abraham, Isaac and Joseph. And I am proud that they are still demonstrating it in the world wars of the world this Passover time in the deeds and the death of my son.